Hey guys and welcome back to Twitchy Plays Kerbal Space Program, my career mode Twitch Tech Industries. And I have a little bit of a story to tell you guys. Now it starts as you would imagine it to, given that last time I was like, right, this time we're doing some SSTOs. So I start looking through some science options here and I realise that I really don't have the technology to be trying to, to do a, a viable SSTO. So I'll go and have a look around the map to see if there's any contracts with scientific targets out there but there's not really much going on so um, I find myself out of Minmus and then I go and double click on Kerbin to try and look back there but obviously I miss and hit my space station and I'm left with this view now I can guarantee you that this footage is not sped up in any way shape or form this is what I was uh, confronted with if you look really closely there you can see that there is like a cubic octagonal strut there yeah I zoomed in to, to get a real good look at it so um Something something bad has happened. If we come out and have a look here, there is an explosion. Some parts are going very, very fast, and some parts, well, they, they, they're in a nice orbit there. Uh, I've noticed that some things have been fired, like, directly upwards, where quite a few other things have been launched directly at the planet. So uh, let's take a couple of minutes, have a look around, see, see what actually has gone on here. Uh, unfortunately, this is all parts of the space station that I was going to use to take all my... Uh, tourists and stuff too so obviously we're gonna have to make some sort of new system up here I think we can do this my my main thought is that I would managed to strut up some robotic parts so I think somewhere along the line there has been like some some mass mismatch of forces and it's just resulted in like very obviously right there at that point on the map resulted in an explosion it, it's quite a quite a beautiful arc on some of them, really. But to be honest, if there is one thing Kerbal Space Program is fully famous for, it is horrendous explosions and beautiful resulting clouds of dust and debris and orbital velocities and stuff. Yeah, it's really nice. So obviously here we have some sort of RCS tank. Now I remember putting this on on there for all sorts of positioning reasons. It's about to meet its ultimate position inside the atmosphere. Coming straight down, so I reckon the forces here will be quite intense. In fact, you can see that it's starting to make the camera shake quite a lot, even though I had actually turned that down quite a lot. I did leave a little bit on there so that there are some sort of artifacts from it. And, and given the, the stresses involved here, massive explosion, big old shaky screen. A true masterclass in why I should remember to attach heat shields to all my vessels. Of course, I still don't because I started playing this game way before heat shields were introduced and now it's just completely catching me off guard every time. Need to get over that though. Really need to get over that. Uh, I notice here we have one more going down into the atmosphere. I think that's definitely going to be one to go for. Though for some reason I had trouble double click on and on it. So I had to go down through the tracking center and then we come back in via that way. One of the many mysteries that this little um, situation has brought up in my mind here is why this is classified as a ship as opposed to a bit of debris. There is no probe core here, there are no Kerbals attached, I mean obviously. There is nothing there that can be called a control system. It is just a hunk of space junk falling down through the atmosphere. But yes, still, if you go and check the map view or the tracking center or like anything like that, it shows up as a ship, you know, with the, the cap command capture icon and stuff which to me struck weird uh, coming down at a different angle you'll note that we actually survived that one which actually to me was a, a bit of a grrr moment because this now means we have to watch it fall through the clouds into the water and all this stuff I was kind of hoping for it to explode but there we go it, it is a beautiful demonstration of the different uh, stresses that different angles show obviously the last one we went straight back straight down absolute destruction this time we've gone at an angle and we've got to wait for it as you guys know waiting for things to plummet through the atmosphere is by far my favorite part of this game but thankfully with the wonders of a uh, post editing time speedy uppy thing we can make this happen pretty quickly okay so out here i have a, a few other uh, questions like what are they all about what's going on over here there are, there are a lot of stuff being flown very far or flung sorry very far out of the system what are they up to and what are they doing of course there is only really one way to find out so let's pick one of the random ones probably one of the ones at the front here give it a double click and see what's going on well we've got the inside of a vessel that's not not too useful but here we go this one actually does deserve to be called a ship it has got a command capsule it's even got some like electric charge and stuff so if the reaction will 
wheels are working. I should be able to turn it around and things like that. But yeah, yeah, it's not. I'm not really going to be able to get this back at any time soon, are we? Uh, I don't think we had anyone in here. Well, at, at least the game is not telling me we've got anyone in there. Of course, their portrait would be popping up. And look at how fast he is being launched out the system. We, we're going down for quite a, a low orbit, coming within the orbit of Eve there before getting flung right out of the system. Which, you know, if we had that multiple solar systems mod on the go, that might have been a good thing. But we don't, so it's not. And we can say goodbye to that officially. That one over there also looks rather interesting. So let's, let's go over there and have a look. And we get this sort of thing again. Which, uh, you know, never, never really is a good sign, is it? So let's try and figure out at least what this part is. Uh, somewhere in here there should be some bit somewhere. I found that cubic octagonal strut just by looking around and zooming in and out. And indeed, here we go. We have another piece here. Uh, I, I think it's one of those uh, structural parts. You know, the ones that's round at the bottom and square at the top with a slight taper to it. With the robotic hinges on it. Uh, this, is, this is what I could get from this, uh, having a look. Unfortunately, I couldn't open up any of the robotics controls or anything like that. But also... Check out the speed there. It, it, the number just like completely overruns the side of the size, sorry, of the nav ball. It's crazy stuff, guys. It's crazy stuff. The, the the sky box is just like flashing around, barely able to keep up. Another good thing to take note of here as we come to the map viewer, where are the planets? Where is everything? The, we are in deep empty space here, trying to look around and find where we are. Look, there's a tight cluster back there of all the stuff. So uh yeah, that's it's very interesting. I'm not sure like, if this is going to cause any serious long-term issues to my game. Like, obviously, those numbers are just going to get bigger and bigger. Hopefully, there is some way for me to completely disable this vessel in the tracking bay. But let's get back to the space center. Yeah, I'm, I'm fully aware that things like this. Under acceleration, though. I mean, what does that tell you? That, that tells me that there's still a force acting upon it. So we're going to have to do something about that like seriously at some point. And oh my god, look at this. It's it's worrying. It's oh my god moments. It's like my entire Kerbin, my entire Kerbin has been messed up. Uh, let's just exit out and come back in and stuff. Well, everything looks all right here. Let's just ignore the space explosions that were going on and get on with today's episode, I suppose, is kind of the best plan to go with here. So we want to go to the space plane hangar and work on our SSTO designs. Well, at least try and see what we can do with the equipment we've got to see if it's going to do anything amazingly well. But to be honest, given the bits that we've got and the, the level of tech we're available to and the new uh, aerodynamics in this system and stuff, I'm, I'm really not expecting wonders here. So my first idea is that we really need to get this carrying at least five kerbals. If it's not carrying five kerbals, it's well, it's just not going to be any use to us. We, can't, we need at least a pilot and four, four tourists to be useful. That's kind of the upper ceiling on the contracts that we're going to be offered here. So I immediately threw away the idea of the hitchhiker's canister because that was just making this big bulky thing that I, I knew wasn't going to get in, like even into the air, let alone into space. So I settled on this design. I think this is quite a nice one. Even uh, even though this is probably not going to make it up into space, I think this core unit here that I've, I've put together here could probably be used for some sort of tourism somewhere else or, or, or something. I'm not I'm not sure. I just I see that shape and I'm just like that could be useful. So the next thing is obviously just to slap a couple of rockets on the outside. You know, once you've got a plane, you need some rockets, and that's how like you make an SSTO, right? At least that's that's the basic principle. So it, this is just a, a test of the technology, if nothing else. We, we've got the rockets, we've got the the jet engines. We're now putting on decent wings, as obviously we need. And then it's a lot of mucking around with fuel tanks and making sure that our centre of mass doesn't get too far removed from our centre of lift, because that would be just absolutely horrendous. Uh, next up. Control surfaces. Now, I only have access to a very limited number of control surfaces here, and indeed, if you look, that limited number is one, which is terrible. There's a tiny, tiny control surface that has next to no control, but it's the it's the level of tech we're at at the moment. Next up, some tail fins. Obviously, we just need to put the most stable uprights we can on there. And I think, like, for all the base technology and stuff, that should be about it. Now we just need to throw some, some landing gear and stuff, but I think this is the principles done. So for the second time during this episode, we'll use the wonders of editing magic and jump forwards to the launch here. Now, 
Obviously my only aim on this runway is to build up enough speed to be able to pull back and take off. Though, as we watch, you'll begin to understand that once again I have completely misplaced my landing gear. I am pulling back, we are over 100 meters per second, nothing is happening. I need to move my rearward facing landing gear forwards. And so we start flying around and I'm like, hmm, this looks good, but my camera is shaking a lot and I don't like how much my camera is shaking so we're gonna have to change that uh, thankfully Kerbal Space Program nowadays has the, the whole sort of UI system built in so if I go in and start changing all the settings here hit accept and my game crashes Woo. So in between then and now I had actually managed to move my uh, landing gear a little bit forwards but unfortunately it still did not take off like a squace... squaceful? A graceful squa swan. Oh my god. Nay, much like my use of language it was atrocious. So in the interest of not just watching this plane fly up very, very slowly, we're going to jump forwards just a little bit, up to three kilometers in height here. Now, I have been climbing up to this height forever. You will notice that my speed is still less than 100 meters per second and now starting to go down. So with that, I hit my rockets and I watch my speed plummet even further. I think we can safely call that a very failed l l test. Uh, Jebediah is going to turn around, come home put her down nicely on the runway and we're going to think about how we can solve these particular issues here and how would we solve this particular issue well after recovering the plane and all the parts and of course Jebediah we'll have a look inside the tech tree here and see where like the hypersonic engines are maybe the pre-coolers stuff like that and I can see that they are very much up a pathway so we need lots of science like many many sciences and having a look in these uh, contract base here we're not actually offered all that much now down the bottom there you can see we've got the explore Juna even Ike now they would bring me a lot of science but there's like hundreds of days to wait yet and I'm not one for just letting my space program lay fallow so I think what we're gonna do is try and build up as much science as we can in the uh, intervening time and yeah, try and grab stuff. Now, I've gone for a lot of stuff around the moon. We need to put an orbital, sta orbital station up in the moon anyway, as it would be nice to have the infrastructure around both, well, both, all Kerbin, Minmus and the moon to shuttle tourists back and forth. But we're also going to take all these uh, temperature scans and stuff like that. If we take a lot of stuff for the same sort of stuff, get the science data, temperature scans, uh, and stuff like that, we can build one very specific robot to go around and do all this work. And that very specific robot is hidden underneath that very specifically shaped fairing up top there. But unfortunately, that is an episode all unto itself. And I will say thank you very much for joining me for this rather strange episode of Kerbal Space Program. I will see you next time where I'm going to reveal what this is. And we're going to have lots of fun on the moon because we always have lots of fun on the moon. But anyway, I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!